Hey Ketoers! Today's question and answer is going to be a couple of questions that came through the Keto Motivation Group and I wanted to share them with you because they seem to be coming up a lot. So question number one is always, 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 how do I get started? When you requested to join this group, there was a little thing in there that said please read through the units in this page and on the Keto Motivation Group we also have a thing that says please read through the files. Now the reason that we do that is because all of the information is there for new members to take a look at and to really understand what it is that they're going to be doing. The ketogenic diet is very specific and so it's really important that you know exactly what you're getting into. So that is the best advice for someone just getting started. Look into the files, look into the units. I have made the units available on, I think they're gonna be on like the left side. Think of it as a class, okay? I tried to structure it to where it's like, how do you get started? What macros are? Intermittent fasting? How do you know if you're adapted? that type of thing. So as you go through the different units, it'll really kind of help build your knowledge bank of what the ketogenic diet is. You want to read up on what macros are. You want to read up on how to track the macros and why they're important. Uh, just, just arm yourself with knowledge. So that's the best thing on getting started. And that's all in those units, you guys. I tried to make it as simple as possible because um, there is so much that goes into it. I tried to really break it down for you guys because it's really hard to understand with so much information sometimes. So if you guys still have questions about that, please head over to those units so you guys can check that out. And um, again, if you have any questions on those, just let me know. So the next question is about calorie deficits because a lot of people are coming from other types of weight loss programs or diets or whatever, and it always teaches us lower calorie counts equal weight loss. And that's not really the case. On keto, while calories are important, we wanna really focus on the macros, the fats, the proteins, and the carbohydrates. The reason that you should be getting your own macros is because that's tailored to your specific needs. So your age, your weight, your height, your activity level, what your health goals are, if you wanna lose weight or maintain weight. And then it'll also ask you what calorie deficit you want to put on there. Generally, people go about 25%. Um, you can kind of play with that number to see, you know, what works for you. But just for instance, my personal macros are 122 fat, 96 protein, and 20 carbohydrates. Each of those have their own calorie count. The fat has nine calories per gram. The protein and the carbs both have four calories per gram. After you total all those up, I'm at a calorie deficit because my calorie count, if I stay within my macros, is only 1,562 calories. So hopefully you can kind of see how that is. Go check out the unit because it'll explain it just a little bit more and you can actually see how the calculations are and everything. Yes, calories are important, but we're not really technically focusing on them. Just be aware because you don't want to eat a two carb food and then figure out that it was like eight or 900 calories. So on to the third one, which seems to be coming up a lot more. What if I'm just not hungry? Do I have to eat my macros? The simple answer is no. If you're not hungry, don't eat. But with that comes, you want to try and at least make your macros throughout the day. It, especially in the, in the beginning, because remember you're training your body to use fat as fuel. And so if you're constantly not giving it enough fat, it's not gonna work. So you wanna at least try and make those, those macros. Now, some things you can do if you're just really not hungry because that's kind of what keto does actually is it makes you to where you can withstand longer without food. Add oils, coconut oil, olive oil, um, avocado oil. Each tablespoon is like almost 100 calories and you'll be getting in those healthy fats. Um, adding avocado, mixed nuts, uh, olives. You can add butter to different dishes to really go um, up the calorie count. And then bulletproof coffee. If you guys haven't made bulletproof coffee yet, uh, it's highly recommended. Not only is it delicious, but um, it's really good for upping those medium chain triglycerides, so those MCTs. You do not have to have MCT oil like the brand or the one that says MCT, coconut oil works just, just as well. Um, 
but that's also another way to get in those healthy fats. So um, it doesn't have to be a super huge, big smorgasbord full of food for you to get in those macros, but you do kind of want to plan it out to where if you're not going to be eating a lot of food, you want to be kind of supplementing it with those healthy fats, those oils and that butter and those, you know, bulletproof coffee if you've made that before. It is important that you try and make those macros, but if you can't, you can't. Don't force yourself to eat. Anyway, thank you so much for watching episode two. If you have any questions, as always, please post them either in the comments of this video or post them to the page. You can direct message me if you need to, and I will um, answer them as soon as I can, most likely in the form of another question and answer video. So I will see you guys in the group and I hope you guys are having a wonderful keto day.